Surviving the Vatican. It's one of the most famous museums in the world. And in this video, I'm with my family and we've got some ideas, a few tips and tricks that could be helpful for anybody ready to visit this place. The first recommendation I have for anybody visiting the Vatican is to book through a third party. That's right, I do not recommend booking on the official Vatican website. This may seem like an odd recommendation, but I found that website to be frustrating. Everything is sold out unless you're booking many weeks ahead of time. Now, if you're on that site and you're willing to upgrade to a special package that includes breakfast or lunch and is many times more expensive, then go ahead and book. But I think the better option is to book through a third party agency. This gentleman holding the red flag was with our agency that we booked through. Our group met about two blocks away from the Vatican and we followed him directly into the museum. It will save you a lot of time if you book a skip the line pass through a third party. You can find a number of reputable agencies on TripAdvisor. Now a skip the line pass will cost you about a $10 premium, but it's absolutely worth it. Remember, the Vatican is one of the most crowded tourist destinations in the world. It's absolutely worth it to book through a third party agency and skip the line altogether. Once you're inside the museum, your group will need to make a decision on whether or not you want a headset. I recommend this because the headset has a lot of great material. Just make sure that everyone in your group, that's adults and children, all get the same type of headset and are on the same program. They have an adult version and a children's version. They're completely different. They're not synced at all. Your kids will be going to different places in the museum. I'm not sure why the Vatican did it this way. Just make sure that all kids and adults are on the same headset program. The Vatican museums are not something you can blitz through. It's not like some places where you can run through this in an hour or two. There are some bottlenecks here and you've got to plan ahead. And quite frankly, you want to take your time. There's some beautiful things to see. Here's some highlights that I recommend. Raphael's famous masterpiece, The Transfiguration, can be found somewhat early on in the museum, not long after you get your headset. You definitely want to take some time and appreciate this painting. The Ceremonte Museum is a place in the Vatican that you're not going to want to miss. And what it is is just a section. It's not an independent building. Don't get confused just because they call it a museum. It's really just some long, beautiful corridors that are filled with hundreds of ancient Roman statues and busts, including the famous statue of Augusta Prima Porta. Don't miss the Pinecone Courtyard just outside the Ceramonte corridors. It's a spacious courtyard featuring an enormous bronze sphere in the center rotating on its axis. I think it's a curious piece of modern art in a place that features so many ancient artifacts. In this video, we've all got headsets and we're touring at our own pace. But if you're with an official tour guide, you may want to ask and make sure that they're going to visit the Ceramonte Museum and Raphael's Transfiguration. Some expedited tours will rush through to the Sistine Chapel and skip over these sections of the museum. Once you've gone through the Sistine Chapel, you can't go back to these places. I was once on an organized tour that completely skipped the Ceramonte section. And I asked about the Augusta Prima Porta at the very end because I assumed we would see it. And I was informed that, sorry, that wasn't part of our tour. So if you want to see these sections and you're with an official tour, make sure to ask beforehand. Whether you're on a self-guided tour or with a tour guide, you will pass through this room. It's the Rotunda Room, designed just like the Pantheon, and that is Emperor Nero's bathtub right in the middle. As you walk through the Vatican, I think it's the Tapestries Hall where things really get interesting. If you look up at the ceiling, you'll notice a sculpted relief which is actually a completely flat ceiling. It's just a 3D painting up there. Meanwhile, the tapestries, Raphael did many of these tapestries, including his most famous one, showing the resurrection of Christ. Yeah. 
Next up is my personal favorite place in the entire Vatican, the Maps Hall, which is a spectacular narrow hallway over 120 meters long that features 40 different frescoes, all of which are maps showing different parts of the Italian peninsula. The ceiling of this room is incredible and features some amazing artwork as well. The gold light on the ceiling contrasts well with the green frescoes on the wall and the marble floor. Just make sure to have your camera ready because this is a narrow room and everyone passes through here on the way to the Sistine Chapel. I always feel like I don't have enough time in the Maps Hall. The foot traffic is going too quickly. So take some pictures and appreciate the few minutes you'll have in this amazing place. There are some shortcuts in the Vatican which let you skip some places and go directly to the Sistine Chapel. Just make sure not to skip the Raphael's rooms. The School of Athens is Raphael's most famous work and is perhaps the second most famous work of art in the entire Vatican save the Sistine Chapel. By this point, if you're on a normal tour, you've likely been in the Vatican museums for at least a couple of hours. Now it's finally time to visit the Sistine Chapel. Typically over 5 million people visit the Vatican to see this place. That's nearly 14,000 people each day. This chapel is especially unique. It's a holy place for over a billion Catholics, as this is where the cardinals convene to elect a new pope. But most people are probably here to appreciate Michelangelo's masterpiece. The Sistine Chapel is the creme de la creme of Renaissance artwork. It took Michelangelo five years to complete the nine Old Testament scenes depicted on the ceiling. Twenty years later, he was commissioned to come paint the Last Judgment fresco that you see on the main wall. This room is busy and somewhat dimly lit, but make sure you savor the time you have in here, surrounded by arguably the most famous artistic scene known to mankind. Just be cautious if you decide to take some pictures. Remember, I took these shots with my clandestine Ray-Ban sunglasses camera. Although the Sistine Chapel is pretty well the end of the tour, the circular staircase afterwards is impressive and you definitely want to see that. One thing to check is where you end up at the end of your tour. Things have changed over the years with COVID and also depends on if you have an official tour guide or you're just doing a self tour. A lot of times if you have an official tour guide, you will end up right in St. Peter's Square. And this is fantastic. If not, you might be going back to the beginning and have to walk around the Vatican walls to get to St. Peter's Square. So check and see where you end up. You definitely want to visit St. Peter's Square and St. Peter's Cathedral probably the same day you go to the Vatican Museums. If you can take the shortcut from the Sistine Chapel to St. Peter's Square, that'll save you a lot of time, but it may or may not be possible. During our visit in summer 2022, some of the COVID restrictions were still in place, so just be sure to check before you go. St. Peter's Basilica is a renowned Renaissance cathedral that took 120 years to build. It's the largest church in the world by interior space, and the Catholic tradition holds that St. Peter himself is buried in a tomb directly below the high altar. You can, of course, pay a fee to climb to the top of St. Peter's for an epic view of Rome, or you can tour the inside where you can light a candle or maybe even listen in on a worship service. My last bit of advice for anybody who's considering the Vatican, if you are going to do the Vatican Museums and St. Peter's Basilica, know that it is a long day, and especially if you're with kids, just be aware that they're going to be tired and hungry by the end of this experience. <laughs>